haven't heard that voice of the Lord. We've heard it so many times. We hear it in church. We hear it from our pastor. We hear it from our youth pastor. Hear the voice of the Lord. But sometimes in our lives, God doesn't speak. And I believe that there is, there is a, I'm going to say this, there, there is a, not a system, but there, there, there is a thing that I believe that keeps us moving to prepare us to hear the voice of the Lord. And that's just what I want to just briefly go over with you guys, because we've all been there. And there's an illustration I'm going to share with you guys. And I've asked the wrestling team to come to kind of help me out here with this illustration. Okay? And, um, and so they're going to go ahead and you might have to move the, uh, you guys going to have to move the guitar here. Just move it to the side. right here with me. Right here. I want to take a look at Abraham. If you guys can open up your Bibles real quick to Genesis. Genesis chapter 12. And then briefly, I'm going to go, we're going to go through these guys really quick. Because when I started asking this question, hearing the voice of the Lord, what do we do when God doesn't speak? I wanted to know what made these guys. When did God speak to Abraham? When did God speak to Isaac? When did God speak to Jacob? When did God speak to Joseph? Because once again, we look at these guys and we think, my gosh, these guys were top notch. They must have been just something special. But let me tell you something. They were just ordinary guys. They were like you and me. They had their faults. They had their issues, but there was something about them that for some reason God intervened and spoke to them in their lives. And real quick, I want you to go ahead. We're going to go through this real quick because we're going to Genesis chapter 12. You guys there? Okay, Genesis chapter 12. Between Genesis chapter 12 and Genesis uh, 25, we have 100 years of Abraham's life. That's 100 years. When we take a look at Genesis 13, we see the promise that's given to him. We see the call. I'm sorry, chapter 12. We see the call that is given to Abraham. Remember the call. I will, say, I will look up to the stars. Do you remember that story? When God speaks to Abraham, we see in Genesis 13, the promise. In Genesis 15, once again, God speaks to him. In Genesis 17, Abraham is about 99 years old now. When we look at Genesis chapter 12, he's 75. Follow up the dates with me. 75 years old, Genesis 12. 99, around 99 years old at Genesis 17. That's 20 years in between. From the time God first spoke to him and then we see again. In Genesis 18, God speaks to him again. And then we see in Genesis 22, the promise is tested. And this is the time when he takes Isaac to be sacrificed as God tested him. And around that time, he was probably around the age between 110 and 120 years old. And so we have a time frame once again. And my question is, as I look at that, because when he dies, we see in chapter 25, Abraham dies at 175. And so we have a 100-year span of Abraham's history. Take a look at Isaac real quick to Genesis 21. In Genesis 21... We see um, Isaac being brought into the world. And between Genesis 21 and Genesis 35, there are 180 years of Isaac's life shared with us. 
In Genesis 26, the promise is given. Isaac was around 60 years old when that promise was given, when God spoke to him. When we take a look at Genesis uh, down to verse 25, we are told that um, he, was a, he built an altar to the Lord. And in 20, 20, chapter 27, he acknowledges the Lord for his success. In chapter 27, he is about 100 years old. So we look at 40 years have passed at that moment that God speaks to Isaac. And then we're told of his death in chapter 35 at 180 years. Between 60 years and 100 years, God spoke to him twice, 40 year span. Jacob, Genesis 25 through 49, that represents 147 years of Jacob's life. And in Genesis 28, the promise was given to him. And in Genesis 28, Jacob is 40 years old. Come on, 40 years old, that means from the first time that God spoke to him, he was 40 years old. When we take a look at Genesis 31, God gives him instructions. Jacob was around, probably around 54 years old at this time. We see in Genesis 32, where he is assured of the promise that God had given to him. He's around 60 years of age. In chapter 35 through 46, in chapter 46, we see where the promise is uh, kept alive, and, and, and God tells Jacob to go to Egypt to be with Joseph. And Jacob was around 130 years of age at that time. Jacob died in verse 49, in chapter 49, at 147 years of age. Many years between from the time God spoke to him and certain times of his life. You take a look at Joseph in Genesis 37. In Genesis 37 through 50, we have about 90 years that are represented. And nowhere in Genesis 37 through 50 did I ever find that God directly spoke to Joseph. But yet Joseph continued to serve his God. And so as I read all this stuff, I began to question myself and say, okay, what in the world? What, what were about these guys? What was about these guys that they still had faith in God when God didn't speak? Because those were a lot of years in between, right? And there's been many times in my life where God has been silent. Where I have questioned, God, are you even there? Come on, you've been there. Where I began questioning my faith. God, I know that you promised me that you're going to do this. I know that you had promised me that you're going to provide for this. God, I know that you had called me for this. Uh, God, why am I going through this situation? God, why is all this situation happening in my life right now? And God is silent. But there's been times where God spoke. When I read these guys, once again, another question that comes to my mind is, what made these guys hold on to a promise? when it seemed that God was so far, very far away. And there's one thing that I can only think of. The only thing that's come to my mind in the last week, and that is this. Communion with God. They, had commu they communed with God. In the midst of that quiet time when God did not speak, they communed with him. You know, there's a passage in the Bible. It says, Daniel 11, 32b. It says, for a, man, for a man to get to know the character of God, a man who knows his God will have strength and do great exploits. A man who knows his God will have strength and do great exploits. And this is where the illustration comes in. I think so many times in our culture, in our mindset, we, you know, communication is, hello, how you doing, Bailey? Hi. We can go ahead into our phones and to our, you know, and text uh, our, our friend, you know, and text, you know, how's it going? And it's instant. We can get on a, a computer and Skype somebody and it's instant. And we have this mindset that when we talk to God, we expect to hear the voice of God just like that. But sometimes God is 
silent. And the encouragement I want to give to you this is commune with God. I think Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they commune with God. Now where do these guys come in? You see, let's just hypothetically say that this here is our quiet time. You see, when we commune with God, we gain strength. When we commune with God, we build our faith. A man who knows his God will have strength and do great exploits. You see, when situations come arise, because I'm sure we take a look through Abraham, we take a look through these guys, situations arose. God, you, I, I look up at the stars and you told me, you told me, why in the world am I dealing with this issue? God, you told me. But you see, it was that commune time with God that built strength. Because see, when it came time for certain situations to arise, you see, certain situations arose. But it was through the commune of God, when we had that time, guess what? It's not going to matter how much we put on because, why? A man who knows his God will have strength and do great exploits. Because we spent the time here. Communing, having that communication with God. You know, the last couple of weeks, maybe you've experienced certain situations in your own life. And you wonder why God's far away. My, I ask you today, are you communing with God? Because you see, there might be other situations that are, will, will arise. But you see, for a man who knows his God, he will what? Have strength and do what? Great exploits. Because when other situations arise, you see, and it may seem like, you know what? I, I can't do this. I can't do this. But you see, because we've been in communion with God, guess what? It makes it a little bit easier for the next situation. You know, we look at God, and God looks at us. He says, that's right, James. You can do it. Remember the promise I've given you, James. Remember the promise. You see, James, I've called you to do great things. That's right. I've called you. I've called you, James. Come on, right here, James. Give it to me. I've called you. Come on, Brandon. Remember, Brandon, the promise I've given to you, Brandon? That's right. You seek my faith with all your heart. Remember the things that I've done for you. Remember the promises that I have given to you. You are the head, not the tail, Brandon. That's right, Brandon. You see, and guess what? We all begin to see the great things that God begins to do. We begin to see what God begins to do in our lives because you know what? He says, what, Marcus? I called you to be something different, Marcus. That's right. It's right here, Marcus, where you draw strength from me, Marcus. It is in this commune time. Remember the promises, Marcus. There may be situations, Marcus, but I am here. I am a faithful God. I am faithful God. You see, and God's going to go ahead. He's going, that's right, Jeremiah. Do not forget what I have told you, Jeremiah. Remember how I shared my heart with you. Remember how I shared my love with you. That's right. Remember the promises I've given to you. Remember, Jeremiah, because you have communed with him you will have strength and do great exploits. And that's how God deals with us. And guess what? Just have your cheering. That's how I think, personally, I think the Heavenly Host cheers for each and every one of us. There have been times in my life when I have not heard God. There's been times in my life where I wanted to throw in the towel. There's times in my life where I came to this place, where I come back to the place of communion. With this right here, if it wasn't for this, I would not be where I am today. But because of communion with God, because of who he is. Don't hurt. 
Come on, Lord, I thank you. I remember your promise that you've given to me. I remember what you've done in my life. I remember that you called me 13, 14, as a 14-year-old. I remember the day that you gave me. I remember your promises. I don't understand sometimes. I feel, Heavenly Father, that you're not there, but I trust in you. For you, Heavenly Father, are my God. You, Heavenly Father, have formed me in the inner womb. You know who I am, dear God. You have set me apart, and I hold on to that. And you see, I am able to move forward because I am confident in knowing that God has been faithful. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph, in the years that they did not hear the Lord, they communed with him so that it prepared them to hear the voice of the Lord. And as we get ready to move into our next section, the challenge that is going to be brought before you is this. May you hear the voice of the Lord so you may say, here am I. Here am I. And when you hear the voice of the Lord, because it could be through God's word. You know, it could be through, you know, my prayer to you is that in, the, in these next few weeks, as you get into God's word, as you open up the scripture, and God begins to speak to your heart. Open up to Jeremiah chapter 1. See, this chapter 1, in Jeremiah chapter 1, I remember reading it as a teenager. And I remember God speaking to me through this passage. And my challenge to you, and my hope, and my prayer to you, is that as you guys are seeking through God and through the Word, that He will speak. You will hear His voice. Because when it says in Jeremiah chapter 1, hear the voice of the Lord here, and I hope and I pray that maybe this might rock some of your worlds today. It may remind you that you are not here by mistake, that you are not here by mistake, that you are here for a reason for such a time as this. Because God says, before I formed you in the womb, I what? I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you. I knew you. Before you were born, I what? set you apart I appointed you as a prophet to the nations oh sovereign Lord I do not know how to speak for I'm only a child for the Lord said if you do not say I'm only a child you must go to everyone I send to you and say whatever I command you do not be afraid of them for I am with you and will rescue you declares the Lord Seems like everything's going on around me, dear God. But I need you. I need you. Spend away from the gym, more my muscles decrease. 
You see, the more that I spend in the gym, my muscles increase. I'm able to lift more. And when we commune with God, that's the same thing. We commune with Him. So I want you to close your eyes as we close it. And I want you to think of your situations right now. Maybe situations are going great. Maybe this is a moment in your life you says, Lord, I thank you. You're holy. Maybe there's situations going on. Maybe home, life, issues where you need to just commune with him and sing hallelujah. And just sing it to him. Don't worry about this up here. Don't worry about your friends. It's between you and God right now, okay? No distractions. And if you're getting get into this, then just tell you to stand there and be quiet. But there's some of you here that need this right now. There's some of you here right now that need to come and meet Him. To give you the strength.